Got a petrified fish here. Let's get it out of here. Check it out. This is a petrified fish scholar. That's the name of this. I'm not sure how this falls down as a scholar. It's almost a straight razor, right? And it does have a hollow ground blade. It's got a crown spine. Yeah, beautiful. Let's see if we can get it to focus here. Beautiful 154 cm blade. It's a PFE 04. It's got uh, olive wood scales, and I believe that's titanium. That backspacer in the pocket clip. Let's check. Yeah. Mm, that is not titanium. That's metal. Some kind of weird metal. I'm going to say that is too. Maybe it's just picking up the screws. I'll take it off. We'll check it again. But a couple of methods of deployment. It's got the front flipper. Works pretty good. It's got nice jimping on it, so it grabs pretty good. But you got to be intentional. Can fail it. You really got to be envisioning coming over the top. Yep. And you can spidey flick this. There's nothing there. It's just smooth blade. But you can get it. Slick. And you can thumb get that. There's enough blade sticking out there that it allows for it. This olive wood's just wonderful. Just very nice. Yeah. It's got a good grip back here. And then you definitely can choke up on this and do detailed, I don't know, like, I, do you want to shave with that? <laughs> I guess. Hey, let's get in it real quick. So, this knife is going on the for sale list. Yeah, this is going to be part of the great purge. And, uh, so, if you're interested in the knife, just keep your eyes out because it'll show up on that list. And that list will, I'll, I'll drop information for it, but it'll show up at the Discerning Man Facebook page. And uh, so, one of the things that I'm trying to do is I'm trying to not get under manufacturers with material and uh let's see yeah that's steel for sure check that backspacer so the backspacer is titanium and i'm guessing this pocket clip is too it's just the magnet was picking up this liner yeah so that's titanium and that's titanium I don't see a lot of crud under there, so I'm probably going to leave that wood alone. I don't really want to be disassembling that if I don't have to. But this is filthy. Woo! Dirty, man. So the knife's definitely going to benefit from a little cleanup. It's got oil in it, but it's dirty. Okay. Yeah, so this one's going to end up in the for sale list. And uh, all of the knives will have some designation. Um, I did not put any of the knives as listed as new in the box. I could have, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to list them all as new or used. And um, I'll provide video or images on whatever anybody wants to see. But... Uh, almost a hundred percent of what's being sold is what has been on this table here. So when you go looking at the list, you'll be able to go back, find the video, and you can watch the video. Now I will tell you, I I'm not trying 
to just give the knives away. I'm trying to fund the channel through the sale. Like what I sell, I'm going to use those funds to continue to purchase knives to run through the channel. And, uh, you know, I have, I haven't even come close to exhausting my current inventory or knives that I had before I even started the channel. And this was one of them. I had this knife for quite a while, way before I started the channel. And so I have a lot of content to go. But one of the things that I want to try to do is I want to try to be a little more current with knives so that as new knives drop in the market, um, I can try to get to it and uh, represent it the way that I do to, you know, help make a decision whether it's something you want or not. Um, so, you know, that's part of the plan anyways, to try to have the content a little more current than just doing a bunch of old two sons and which don't get me wrong. I like my two sons, man, and I'm going to continue to check them in and purchase them and bring them, bring them through the channel for sure. But, um, I mean, a good example, like a drop bear, drop bear has been out for quite a while. And it, to me, it's an amazing knife so much so that, I mean, I definitely recommend get one unless there's something about an access lock knife that you just hate. Um, I was out on access lock knives, but that drop bear got me interested again. Like, man, I just, I really like that knife. Well, I mean, I didn't put that knife on in my inventory. <laughs> I mean, I just recently did, you know what I mean? So I'm not saying I need to run out and buy every new fad thing, but I mean, being a year late on a on a cool knife, I think I could be a little more timely than that. So, I mean, that's the whole point. And uh, this knife will be part of that purge. I'm going to put it on the block and move it out. I've really gone through my inventory and I'm looking at knives. And it's a tough thing because like this knife, I really like this knife. It's really unique. Um, and it's a really cool piece to have in my my collection but I don't think I've ever carried it once I don't think it's ever gone into my pocket and so I have a lot of knives that went into my pocket and I carried it around for a day or didn't ever go into my pocket I checked it in on the channel and it went into a case and that's where it's been ever since so rather than just let it sit there if I can sell it, it can provide revenue to buy another knife to bring into the channel. So, I think I currently have mm, over 70 knives on that list. And some, some high-end, some mid-end, definitely a lot of budget knives. Because I run a lot of budget knives through this channel. But there's some higher end knives in there too that I really like and I bought and I don't ever carry. And uh, I can tell you, man, it was a hard thing to do. It's like, I'm sure that's how hoarders feel in that show. You know, it's like, well, come on, Tim, surely you could get rid of this one. You know, when's the last time you touched it? And it's like, yeah, I guess I could get rid of that. And then I get to look at it and I go, wait a minute. I really like that knife, man. That's a, that's a great knife. I don't want to get rid of that. You know, anyways, I you know, I'm I'm trying to think of the greater good. And I think the greater good is not to hoard a knife like this and keep it just to keep it, but to go ahead and purge it, sell it, try to get a reasonable price for it. Um and keep in mind, I, you know, when y'all are looking at these knives, it's a way to fund the channel, you know, so rather than me just like trying to pimp to distributors or manufacturers or, um, 
trying to find creative ways for y'all to pay. Um, if you'll help me purchase some of these knives, you get a knife, the channel gets some funds, and through those funds, I can continue the channel forward. Um, I, I've got some other ways, too, that I'm looking at. Um, but I... So, this would be a great place for me to throw this out. I may end up saying it in another video talking about the sale list and knives that I'm purging to, to fund the channel. But I have done three knives on this channel that were sent to me or give to me by a distributor or a manufacturer to review. One was sent to me to review on Amazon. And so, uh, as a result, I got to keep the knife. And then after that, I did a review for it on this channel. Uh, the other two, uh, I did one of the videos and uh, put it on this channel. And then the other one, I did the video, but I, I've kept it private. <laughs> I haven't... I haven't released the video and it's been there for a month. And the reason I haven't is because I feel like Ron Popeil, man, for some reason, when I'm reviewing somebody else's knife, not because I liked it. And so I went, Hey, I think I like that. I'm going to buy that knife. <laughs> but because somebody sent it to me to review, I feel like a pitch man. I feel like I'm a shill for the company. Oh, company man. <laughs> Working for Mr. Big. I don't, you know, and it's just the goofiest thing, man. Because I've been in sales like forever, man. Like most of my career, 40 years I've been in sales, brother. Some form or fashion. You know, operations that ultimately had accountability for sales. Even if I didn't directly sell, like I had sales forces that worked for me. And then later in my career, I was literally a vice president of sales and responsible for hundreds of salespeople. <laughs> and so it's, it's not that I can't sell, but maybe it's because I don't want to sell. Like, it's what I like. It's what I'm looking at. Now, some of y'all recommend knives. And and then I look, I go look at it. And I go, yeah, I kind of like that. So I get it. Um, but I can tell you there's been a lot of recommendations that I look at the knife and I go, yeah, that ain't for me. And so I don't get it. So I'm trying to, I think I don't want to go that route. And I'll be honest, to the point to where if the amount of content that I have to bring dwindles because I can't keep up that pace, I've got to purge these knives and and I can't continue to fund a uh, product into the channel. And some of my other channels for product don't work. Like I'm making a lot of friends doing this and I can't. I can't tell you how many legitimate collectors have hooked up y'all and you guys know who you are and have said, Hey, here's my collection. I mean, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of knives beautifully displayed in amazing cases. I mean, and no questions asked, brother, tell me what you want out of here. I'll package it up, send it to you, put it on the channel. You package it back up and send it back to me. So I, there's some other avenues for me to bring content to the channel, but I'm pretty convinced right now that I don't want to, I don't want to be Ron Popeil. I don't want to be shilling for the companies. I mean, you know, would it be nice to get uh, a $600 knife? You know what? I really want a Shirogorov. 
<laughs> there's one that I want. Now, I, listen, so I'm, I'm going to make it clear. My integrity <laughs> has a line. Like, if they want to offer me that knife, I mean, I'm going to put it on this channel. Just know that I'm going to do it. <laughs> and I will shamelessly, the rest of my days, tell you how great Shirogorov knives are. <laughs> nah, that's stupid, right? <laughs> yeah, so, hey man, that's a big story to talk about why I'm selling this knife and why I'm going to put it on the list, um, but that's what's up. So, I mean, I dig it. It's a good knife, man. Runs good. It's got great action. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about ergonomics. So, you know, good grip here. It's not going to make confident just because there's not enough of a finger guard. There is a little bump here. Hey, real quick, I digress back. There is relief here to get access to the lock bar, and the lock bar access on this is wonderful. Couldn't be easier to get in and get this. You know, there, the amount of lockup in there is like mm, 40%. So, you know, it's really nice in there. Um, this is a really nice grip. It's very comfortable. There's jimping all the way up here for this. Um, I'm just not going to call it confident. The pocket clip, you're aware that it's there, but it's not hot. And then, of course, there's choke up here. Now, I wouldn't call this choke up confident either, just because we're forward and this finger is right up on the back of this blade. And I I never see that as a good idea in heavy work. You know what I mean? Like shaving, you know, and don't you shave, uh, you know, upside down or something? Like is, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure how that would work with this. Maybe somebody could, you know, do a video and show how you'd actually do this. Um but all in all, the ergonomics are pretty good. This wood's really refined. It's comfortable in the hand. Yeah, I like it. And of course, the action is just stellar. Let's check that pocket clip. Sorry for all the babbling, but I've got, you know, I'm making some decisions for the channel. And now I'm running some videos, so it gives me a chance to talk about it. So in the thick material, this pocket clip's money. And, and I'll be honest, I like this profile, this titanium, the wood, this titanium, and then you've got that shiny satin D2 blade right next to it. Man, that's a, it, I mean, it's a, it's a weird thing that I'm talking about, but the aesthetics in pocket looks good. Man, this looks really good. And in a pair of black pants or black jeans, whoo, this thing would be killer. Man, I make it sound like I'm a knife model or something. Uh, regular jean material, it's a little loose. Could I tighten that up? Probably. Uh, my spot back here, yeah, money. Very nice. I mean, it's got a good grip. It's not a horrible tension on that. It's just, I think in the jean size material, it could be improved. Let's check it. Oh, pardon me. Let's check it for safety. Yeah, that, that blade is way down there. No, no chance of catching that. No chance of catching this tip and look at the end of this blade what a cool profile very nice so the clips are passed the tips are passed and then there's absolutely no chance of contact in here so you can be very confident of putting this in your pocket and not cutting yourself uh i wonder if it's sharp man i'll tell you that hollow ground the way that that looks this thing better be like a razor Yeah, and it is. Mm-hmm. Razor blade. Look at it. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt this would shave hair, for sure. Very, very, very sharp. And I think could easily strop this to uh, be even sharper. I mean, I haven't stropped it. Uh, price and availability. 
So Amazon has this for $69.99. Um, and you can have it next day. Order it today. You can have it tomorrow for $70. White Mountain Knives has it for the same price. But, of course, DM10 in the coupon code will get you $7 off. You can pick this up for like 63 bucks. Now, you're looking at three to four, three to five days delivery through them. Yep. Um, thinking of those two prices, I'll probably sell this exact knife right here in this box right here. I will probably be selling this for... I'm going to try to get, let's say, $60 for it. Um, and if I price some of these wrong, man, don't hesitate to reach out and um, let me know. And uh, we'll see what we can do. But yeah, so I, I'll probably try to get like, you know, 60 bucks for it, $55, $60. And uh, that includes shipping, but I'm not going to ship it with additional insurance, which the price of this, there's no reason to. I set the value at 100 bucks. If it gets lost, file a claim against it. You should be good to go. Yeah. So, Petrified Fish Scholar. And uh, watch for it on the for sale list. Appreciate you watching.